Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Scourge of War Gettysburg, the Antietam DLC. This is from a real-time tactical game called Scourge of War Gettysburg, which is made by Norbsoft Dev. It is published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. It is not available on Steam. You have to go over to get Matrix Games to pick it up. Uh, it was originally developed in 2012, Scourge of War Gettysburg was, and then over the next two years or so, a various DLC packs came out. One of those focused on the Battle of Antietam, which is what you're looking at in front of you today. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago, and uh, this this is the early part of the battle. So we're actually playing a battle that lets you fight the first six hours of the Battle of Antietam from the Union perspective, and in our first episode, we began the attack with Hooker's first corps on the Confederate left flank, the Union right flank. Uh, we are bringing in Mansfield's 12th Corps to support that attack. We are also sending in Sedgwick's division of Sumner's Corps. Fortunately, Sedgwick's troops, which were outside our control until they got to this point on the battlefield, did not accidentally stumble in uh, getting their flanks shredded and getting completely destroyed. Sumner's or Sedgwick's division is coming in fresh and ready. Uh, and so a big, big difference, and this makes a huge difference in the way the battle could unfold, is that Sedgwick's very large division of over 5,000 men is going in and going to actually help as opposed to in the real battle they lost like 2,000 men uh, they they sort of stumbled into the enemy and got hit on three sides and just completely shredded uh, in like 30 minutes and, and that won't happen here we're deploying our troops into position and we're going to support the attack where hooker is starting to lose steam his units are starting to to get exhausted we're going to continue that attack and so this was taken from a live stream from my twitch channel Again, the game's a little bit older, it's a little bit dated, but I think it's uh, truly uh, special in terms of its portrayal of the Civil War. One thing I will say is that uh, the most of the terrain graphics are turned off. You'll, it'll look like mostly like just muddy, barren, barren terrain in most of these videos, and that's because I use the T button to make the trees go away, so it's easier to see my troops and issue orders. Um, but if you want to play a more difficult game where it's harder to see things and harder to issue orders, you can definitely do that. Not what I did on the stream. I wanted to see my units in line of battle, uh, so that does mean that units that are wo in woods or trees or whatnot, the trees are generally turned off. I sort of toggle it every now and then, uh, but just something to be aware of. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut up now. We're going to turn it back over to my live stream yourself, and we're going to continue the battle. Two regiments up on fence lines was smart. Meanwhile, the, uh, the 9th Pennsylvania has broken. It's okay, though. We're bringing the 11th up in to, to fill the gap. Meade's division is 300, 300 points, so 300 more casualties inflicted than lost because there's no objectives on that right flank. All right, so Sumner's boys, it looks like Sedgwick's boys are, are deploying. Again, not under my command yet, but... Oliver Howard's division is also coming up. So a bunch more reserves coming up this way. Meanwhile, we've got Mansfield's boys coming cross lots rather than using roads. Dummies. They're gonna they're gonna arrive tired, which is just great. Hey Corfax, how you doing? Alright. So just as, as Hooker's core is about to be used up, we'll have one, maybe two more cores to hit the enemy with, another 10,000 or so soldiers. We are routing a good deal of Confederates here. You can see several of these units are running in retreat. There's another Rebel Regiment running. Generally, when units perm route, they kind of permanently route, so you don't have to worry about them coming back. If they just retreat, they can come back, but when they're running in complete you know, despair like those boys are just, you know, running back. Typically, we're okay. We're going to bring uh, Marcinia Patrick's Brigade here forward. Then the Ir Irish Brigade, is it? can't remember what the name I don't know. The Irish Brigade was in Sumner's Corps, wasn't it? They were at the Sunken Road. Um, all right, so some hand-to-hand -hand fighting going on up here with the 7th Pennsylvania Reserves. General McClellan, my division has arrived on the enemy's left as ordered. General Sedgwick Sumner. Good, good, good. Very good news. We are not going to get confused with Sedgwick. We are going to put him right where we want him. All right. Sorry for the, the panning going so slow. All right, Sedgwick. 
Let's see what we want to do with you. That's a lot of fucking troops. All coming on the field. Alright. So we're going to take command of Sedgwick. Which brigades do we want? Alright. We're going to move Howard's brigade over here. So Howard's Brigade is going to form up in line of battle. Gorman's Brigade, you're going to extend our our left. And you're going to go in... Oh, God, that's a big brigade. 1,700 men, a lot of regiments here. You're going to extend our left in this open train over here. We're going to see if we can get around the Confederate flank over here. Dana's Brigade... You're going to extend to the right, and you're going to reinforce the troops in the cornfield. All right, so Dana, you're doing that. Good old Bull Sumner. Already taking command of Howard. Dana. Gorman's the other one, right? Where is he? Take command of him. Meanwhile, Mansfield's corps is also coming up at the same time. These troops might need a little bit of a break, but the artillery will be nice. What's going on over there? Ninth Pennsylvania routed and running. Move your batteries forward, boys. Make sure they're all in the fight. All right, let's move this battery over here on the right. These guys in the road. All right. Heaviest fighting looks like it's kind of going off on the right flank here. Where are these guys? These guys look like they're routing the 6th North Carolina of Hood's division, but it looks they might actually be coming forward. Not routing. So good news for us. Sedgwick's division is deploying just as this Luff division in Howard's Corps is getting its reserve is fully committed. So that should re, you know restore the center of our line. The right flank of our line is going to need some of those troops from Mansfield, I think. We did bring one brigade up. Got a lot of troops in here that are kind of wasted. These guys have uh, sharps, don't they? They do. But... We'll see. We'll, we'll kind of we'll see if we can push forward with some of these regiments as well. Okay, more more troops pulling back. Let's go to me. Let's see how things are going. McClellan, we've taken 2,200 casualties. We've got about 2,000 troops in battle. We've inflicted over 3,200 though. So if we inflict even even casualties and we push hard on the Rebs here, they're going to be in some serious trouble. So we're definitely doing some butchery here. Over 5,400 casualties so far in just over 40 minutes of combat. Started at 545. I can't do math. 545 makes it 38 minutes of combat. Meanwhile, on McClellan's section of the field, it's nice and peaceful. But the weight of numbers as, as two core, actually three core, Mansfield, Hooker, and Sumner, at least Sumner's lead division of 5,700 troops, all crushing on Jackson's line I'm hoping will cause the Rebs to break. We're looking at a, the, the view of the line here from the Rebel spot of the field. Are these cannons firing? They are. So are these guns. We're bringing up some artillery, getting it a little bit closer to the battle. Rebs are getting around our flank over here a little bit. That's concerning. We'll bring the uh, 80th New York up here. Stop that little foray by the uh, 10th Louisiana of Jackson's division. Trying to get up and around Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Robeson. Yikes, the 2nd Brigade is being commanded by a lieutenant. 
The, div the brigade commander's been shot multiple times. Bring these guys up as well. Stop this flanking maneuver. This lead brigade here, though, the 8th Regiment, is, is definitely going to rout. What am I doing? I clicked the wrong unit, didn't I? No, I actually clicked the right one. Okay. I could order these guys to charge to try and break the Rebs in their front. There's a very small number of troops in a lot of these regiments, but they are they are backed by artillery. Rather not eat unnecessary canister fire. Our real strength is, is lining up in these woods here, you can see. Getting my officers shot up? You're damn right I am. Alright, so we've got Dana's brigade is coming over. Oh boy, I've got more men than I know what to do with right now. Lieutenant Hector Tyndale. I think he's of Mansfield's Corps. But I'm just feeding him in brigade after brigade after brigade and trying to stack up and break the rebel rebel flank. We'll have to deal with a large battery of reb guns over on that uh, knoll toward the Confederate center at some point. All right, Tyndale, we're going to take command of you. You're going to move in double line here. May have already gotten you confused with someone else. Dan Rook also you've only got 600 men huh there's like three rebel regiments against this blob of blue the great blob of blue Colonel William Goodrich 3rd Brigade 2nd Division move your troops over off to the right have you ever heard of the light brigade Bobby Lee, you shouldn't have invaded Maryland. This was a grave mistake on your part, I suspect. I don't think I actually moved Mansfield, by the way. So the Corps commander's just chilling in the back. Alright, these troops are almost in position over here. We could start a general advance in the center and left. Meanwhile, we're actually holding okay in these woods. A couple of these lead lead units here are going to get shot up a bit. Some of those lead regiments or whatever. But uh, but Meade's troops have, have done well for themselves in holding this right flank. Relatively small division here. They've lost 1,100 men, but they've inflicted more than 1,400 casualties. Lee is a stone holding against a wave of blue. Well, that wave is going to wash up and over him, pick him up, and carry him out to sea at this rate. Or that's the hope, anyway. Um, by the way, Krazers, thank you very much for the follow. And J Street, thanks for the bits a little bit ago. We'll probably be returning to, uh, to Crusader Kings tomorrow night, would be my guess, at this rate. Um, I don't know how, how late we'll be streaming tonight. Ricketts Division is doing, doing well for itself. Sumner, your boy's going in yet. Oh, they are forming up. They are ready to crush this rebel flank. Look at all these troops extending that line. Now, I think there's rebel troops here. I think this is out toward the sunken road. Antietam is a very confusing battlefield. I, uh, I got a chance last fall to walk the battlefield of Antietam, and it, it can be very confusing to understand what's all going on. All right, we're going to advance... Gorman on a double line into this rebel flank. Gordon is also going to advance on double line. Ex 
extend that flank out. He may expose his flank to Rebs up this way. I'm not sure. We'll see. But we're going to move 2,700 men under Gordon. 1,700 men under Gorman. Gorman and Goodwin. Or Gorman and... Gorman and Gordon. Jeez. And then we'll move uh, Crawford's brigade forward also. To push in here. These guys are moving double. So another 2,500 men. This is a huge brigade. So we're going to try and press him here. Move forward, men. For God's sake, put the pressure on him. Sedgwick, your division must advance. Howard, move your troops forward. Put the pressure on him, boys. Keep it up. All of them. Dana, move your brigade through this gap. So you run into resistance anyway. We'll try and split these troops, push back on these batteries here, get up close on these batteries and destroy them. War in the Pacific replay, JD Knights. Um, I'm not sure. It might still be a little bit. I haven't actually sent my turn back to, to XTRG. Taking a little bit of a break. I know he's been much more interested in the... Uh, dad man series that he's running so i've been kind of using that to sort of recharge myself uh, i know he had some big things going in on that series so he you know kind of indicated there wasn't a real rush i think i think the plan is probably only one turn a week or so for a while i know that means it's gonna take forever for us to get anywhere but that's just right now uh hopefully you know things pick back up a little bit later once uh once we get a little bit get a little bit recharged if you will why are these guns limbered up Whose battery is that? That's your battery, dude. Get your guns unlimbered. Bring them forward and unlimber. Get them in action. Those are Napoleons. They need to be... They need to be close to be useful. Alright. Interesting. This lead regiment here, the 8th Pennsylvania Reserves, were able to hold out for quite a while against pretty overwhelming forces. All right, meanwhile, the advance is progressing. Sedgwick's division's going forward. Old John. Uncle John. You can see Howard's brigade is moving forward on a front. He's got two big regiments pouring it in to the 4th Alabama's flank. 4th Alabama is returning fire. Seventh Michigan also over 400 men, over 380 men here in the 59th New York. Moving forward, they're inside 100 yards. Just halt and fire, boys. I would love to to play the game with with the trees and everything else on. Kind of robs the the beauty of the battlefield by turning it all off, but. I'm not good enough. These guys look like they're routed, but they might be trying to rally over there. Advance, Gordon. Roll them up. You too, Gorman. Keep the pressure on. We got to crush him on this flank. Been going for just shy of an hour. We're making good progress. Hood's division, I think, has already been expended. Hooker's Corps did its job in exhausting the front ranks of the Rebs, and now we're trying to we're trying to exploit that and push push harder through the center. These guys are exhausted. All right, well, you're inside 100 yards. There's no valid targets in range? What do you mean there's no valid targets in range? Let's 
bring some artillery up over over here. Some of these guns already on limited or in end or in action. We should be able to roll these guys up. We just have to be careful because there's a very large battery of rebels artillery, like a bunch of guns over here that could easily fire into the flank of a, of a brigade or a division and do a lot of damage if we're not careful. I want you to keep advancing, Howard. I want you to keep the pressure up. Keep closing that range. Keep moving in. Keep up the pressure. Keep up the pressure, boys. Keep up the pressure. Pour it into them, lads. All right. Captain Reynolds. Okay. With the brigade commander over here, Dana's command. One regiment on the line is not good enough, Dana. You need to get all your men in the action. Listen to Lincoln. Put all your men in. Not just a portion of the army, but the entire army must fight. These guys retreating? No, they're just redeploying. It's a strategic redeployment. God, this game is just... I know it's not gorgeous in the typical 3D graphic sort of way, but it's gorgeous in the, the scope of the fighting that it portrays. I want to zoom in here and see these troops obscured with smoke firing into rebel regiments to their front in a wood line. Flags just barely visible. Confusion is must be evident amongst anyone fighting in a situation like this. Blue coats marching through their own lines, but blue coats all over. This this regiment here is in hell, the fourth Louisiana of Ewell's division. Just getting chewed up. Meanwhile, these Rebs here, they were trying to rally the 3rd North Carolina, but they're they're pushed off. I don't know if these guys have been engaged. I think the 4th Georgia has of Hill's division. These guys won't be able to take this fire for long. You know, if we go back to me, we're up to 2,800 casualties. I feel like the, the intensity of the casualties has dropped off a bit. Rebs are at about 1,200 more casualties than us. 4,000 casualties already taken. It's only 6.30 in the morning. And uh, as a reminder, the Rebs lost about 10,000, I think it was, at Antietam. The Union about 12,000. So uh, we're well on our way after well, almost an hour here. Meanwhile, you can see more troops in motion here. French's division of Sumner's Corps, not yet in my hands yet, but you can see 6,000 troops on the field here. So right now, Sumner's Corps is 11,000 men on the field, 8,300 men under Mansfield. You can see that uh, Hooker's got about 5,400 men left. Some of his units are still are still fighting. Hooker has come up. He's observing the battlefield from back here. You know what, Tyndale, you're just going to go right through the rebel line. You're just going to move forward. Your 1100 troops. Hoffman, you're going to you're going to push forward in here. Looks like as these troops advance out of this cornfield, we are opening up a little bit of a gap with the troops on the right under Meade. We need to we need to get in there and close that gap, flank this enemy artillery perhaps. Colonel Ayers' brigade here has already suffered, oh my god, they've only got 200 men left. They've suffered two-thirds casualties. Poor devils. Surprised the Rebs on Nicodemus Heights have not played a, a more active role. Hey, Matt Foley, thanks for the follow. Was it was it Lincoln or was it Butcher? It was probably both. I'm sure Lincoln stole the quote from me. He said, "What did what did THG say? That's a brilliant quote." Don't tell anybody, boys, but I'm gonna take it. All right, we're going to move these men forward as well. Christensen's Brigade. We don't need to push with you. 
Gorman, you move your men for it as well. It's like you pushed all the troops to your front and back, and now you're just sitting on your laurels. It's, it's frankly because I took command of your unit. Major John. Where did Howard go? That's hard stuff. There's Howard. Keep moving, Howard. Keep your boys moving. Slowly press forward through this field. Make the Rebs resist you or crush them. You know, a lot of our troops over here on the flank are laying down. These guys are taking heavy Rebel artillery fire. We'll advance these guys toward these guns. does look like they've got some infantry formed up here. 3rd North Carolina in front of some guns. You know, I've taken command of most of the brigades, so I can probably leave the division commanders off take command. Because they can't issue orders to units I've already taken over from them. Okay. All right, so the Rebs are giving way all along the line, really. Come on, Tyndale. Keep moving. Dana, keep moving. Move this line forward. Keep on pressing. We can't... We can't wait. We can't slow down. Meade's division is pretty pretty badly shot up, I'd say. 700 men left out of, of about 2,000. We'll advance on those guns. Could go try and take those supply wagons. Does look like there's a very thin line of infantry, but we're almost through Jackson's line. It feels like the Confederate flank here is broken. It's just a matter of continuing to exert pressure. These guys, the only problem is our troops are exhausted, so I can't really charge them off. Gotta slowly advance them off. Let's move Gorman forward here in double line through this field. Sedgwick, your boys are doing splendid. Keep up the pressure. Uh, um, all right. We just heard some canister bolts. We can take these two objectives. This will be pretty big. Also, the Dana Church or the Dunker Church is out this way. The 4th Georgia has surrendered to us. We got that white flag out there. Howard's Brigade, keep it up, boys. Keep keep advancing, keep pushing. I didn't tell you to stop. We're going to have to take a bunch of casualties to destroy these guns, but they're worth it. They're worth it, boys. Three hundred men left, and that's how many you've taken thirty-four casualties, and your brigade only has three hundred men. Yikes. More troops coming up here. What unit is this? All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Scourge of War Gettysburg, the Scourge of War Antietam DLC pack uh, by Matrix and Slytherin Games, uh, or at least published by them. It's developed by Norbsoft Dev. Uh, the game is a little bit older, a little bit dated. You can definitely tell that in the sprite graphics. I don't do a lot of zooming in, so it probably doesn't look as pretty from, from on high. Also, with the trees and terrain mostly turned off for most of this playthrough, it, it's a little bit of a of a gray blob that you're watching me play on, but that's frankly the, the easy easiest way to issue orders to units and keep a good good line of sight on what's going on and, and sort of keep the attack coordinated. We've really just sort of turned into a slow but steady steamroller. We're sort of uh, 
gradually overrunning the rebel positions. Uh, our entire line seems to be held up every time we meet two or three really undersized rebel regiments. So they're doing a good job of slowing us down. I mean, it's only a six-hour scenario. We need to be making more progress than we are uh, to really win a decisive victory in this fight. But I think, I think we'll get there. I think if we just keep the pressure up and we keep rolling them, they're going to bring up reserves that are going to slow us down. But we're just going to keep crushing them under the, under the weight of the massive number of uh, Union manpower that we have. And hopefully we're able to keep things going. I mean, we're definitely doing better than the Union did historically to this point. Um, but there have been some, some tense moments. There have been uh, some setbacks. But I think we're doing better because we're coordinating better. Hooker went in largely as he did historically and was spent largely as he did uh, was historically. But just as he was being spent, Mansfield come, came up roughly as historical. But instead of moving Ma Mansfield off to the left... I moved him more in behind Hooker to support that attack where it was already occurring. And then I was able to bring Sedgwick's division, which was really a non-entity other than taking like 2,000 casualties in the battle, but really affecting very little of Sumner's corps, and extended or left with that. So Sedgwick is really taking the place of what French started to do, uh, but a little bit further east. And so we've, we've still got almost a two-core uh, line moving forward. Sumner's second corps is very large. Uh, the one division is almost half the size of Hooker's entire corps. So between Hooker's remnants, Sedgwick, and Mansfield, we essentially have a two-core front pushing the Rebs with about 20,000 soldiers, maybe 15,000 with the casualties we've taken. Um, and they've already, you know, they've already lost more than 10% of their entire army. So we're 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 making progress, but it's slow. Anyway, guys, I am planning on continuing this series, so please let me know your thoughts down below if you'd like to see more of this. And uh, that's going to do it for tonight, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is The Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, as always, I'm out.